Uh, welcome back to TYT Sports. Uh, I'm joined today by Steven Jackson. Steven, thanks for coming by, man. Glad to be here, man. Yeah. Thanks for having me. Well, we're going to jump right into one of the topics we haven't discussed too much just yet, but I'm excited for it because tickets do go on sale tomorrow. Mm -hmm. uh, the big three co-captain. Mm -hmm. Chauncey is the captain, correct? Chauncey the, the captain. Threes. Yep. And you got you, you got Reggie Evans, Chauncey. Player coach, uh, as, as you mentioned, coach Charles Oakley, mm -hmm. Larry Hughes, Larry Brian Hughes is Cook. there, mm -hmm. and this is. How, tell me, go to the beginning. How did this all start getting put together? Were you approached by somebody? <laughs> did you say, I like, I want to do this. I want to get a three on three league going for the summer. Yeah, Roger Roger Mason, <clears throat> which is a big part of the, the NBA Player Association when I played, is mm -hmm. a good friend of mine, and um, Cuban and brought him on mm -hmm. uh, to the Big Three League, and he let us know what was going on. It was a league, all NBA players. And it was a chance for us to compete again and play mm -hmm. on a high level. And um, every guy that I know that still plays as is, as they're still in great shape, it was a no-brainer for us. You know, being able to, to, to travel, play in these different cities and uh, build that camaraderie again with all the guys we've been playing against in the NBA, it was exciting. And when he called me, you know, I, I, I was still playing to get back in the NBA. So oh, yeah. I'm in great shape, so um, I was excited about it, and I can't wait to get started. You say a lot of the guys that are in the league have only been out of the NBA for upwards of two or three years at the most, mm -hmm. and obviously you guys are still hooping, you're still playing. Mm -hmm. um, I was curious, is there any team you're afraid of? No. The <laughs> uh, only thing I'm afraid of is garden weddings. <laughs> I ain't afraid of nothing else. <laughs> nothing on this earth, no human, no animal, nothing. I like my chances. AI still got a crossover? He's going to use it? I haven't seen AI... Play in a long time. I don't even know if he's going to play in the league, but Not I'm pretty good sure. Thing or a bad thing. Yeah, you don't know. Thing. What if you got new, got new tricks. That's a, that. A, play, him, him playing would be a good thing. Him not playing, I don't know. You know, I don't know what type of shape mm, he's in, of or when the last time he played. But you know, he he has a certain skill that probably never leaves. So if he decides to play, I'm pretty sure he still can go out there and get yeah. it done. All right. Well, what's really fun about this is for people like me growing up. I mean, I was here. I'm going to throw it back. The ring you're wearing, I was 12 years old when you won it. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but one of the things that's interesting, by the way, about not just that Spurs team, but your career past that is I was just watching back on some tape. Mm -hmm. People call Steph Curry, and he's hitting threes from 40 feet, how God knows how far back. You had range in a time where the NBA was not necessarily unlocking the three point shot. Statistically, you were making two, two and a half a game at a time where they weren't. The only ones I can think of off the top of my head in that time period, specifically 2002, 3, 4, 5, 6, Steve Nash is a good three-point yeah, shooter. Yeah. And then you had some specialists, but not the range. Did that something that you started to develop because you felt that you needed that to like counteract your ability to drive and dunk, drive the lane, get to the hoop? Or was this something that just was told to you by a coach? I was curious how that got developed. Now that, that I just had the confidence to take some of those shots. And, you know, a lot of times when you shoot three-pointers and you step on the line, the coach be like, ah, Jack, you're shooting a three-pointer, you shooting a three -pointer, but you step on the line. You know, so I used to always make it a point to step back because I never thought about looking at the line during the right, game to course. see if I was. So it just came natural to me. And uh, I really started shooting a lot of shots behind, like with, a, with some range, was in Golden State. Yeah. We played fast. And that's when my, really, my shot, my long-distance shot really took off. <laughs> Speaking of Golden State, mm -hmm. eight seed Golden State Warriors dethroned the number one seed Dallas Mavericks in a hell of a series, in a hell of a series that not a lot of people expected to go that way at that time. Right. Uh, and then there were some rumblings oh, yeah. last no year, a couple, a couple months ago, that those eight seed Warriors could beat these 2017 Warriors. Still true? You know. <laughs> do you still do you believe that? I do. For the simple fact that. You were, they weren't told you could do it back then. Same well, thing. everybody on that team competed. Everybody on that team played hard, and we played for each other. So with today's basketball, when it's hard to see 10 guys, I mean, t well, five guys mm -hmm. on each team competing at all times. You don't see that no more in the NBA. We competed. We played hard. And I'll take a guy, nine out of ten times, I'll take a guy that competes and plays hard than a guy that, that has all the talent in the world because the guy with all the talent in the world feel like he could take shortcuts. Mm. And... But the team that Golden State have right now, they have two MVPs. <laughs> they have Draymond Green, That's probably true. one of the de de defensive player of the year, one of the best all-around players. They have one of the best shooters in the league, two of the best shooters with Steph and Clay. So that team is going to be hard to beat in any era. Agreed. In any <laughs> era, but just the confidence I have in me, myself, and my teammates, I think we could play against anybody. Yeah, so I mean that's I mean that's the answer you gotta say. Because if you were to come on here and be like, yeah, they beat it, I mean that's not as much fun. Right. And who? Yeah, how much confidence am I? 
saying so having to myself, have to, have to, I say that, of right? Of course not. You can't say that. Of course. Do you think the Warriors go on and beat the Cavs this year? You think the Cavs go on and beat the Warriors, the Spurs? Any predictions going forward for the NBA playoffs? The, this is why predictions are hard right now. Because we never know and gets them right. <laughs> I don't get them right. Well, no one gets them right. Well, most of the time people get them right as far as the finals. Yeah, it's easier yeah, though. But it's not easy this year because Pop you, you played showed them. another <laughs> level of coaching in this Houston series. You know, he he basically made James Harden quit. <laughs> and yeah. Pop knows how to take what best what the good players do best. He knows how to take that away. Mm -hmm. So I really feel like he's gonna make it real tough on Durant and Curry with those pick and rolls and those open shots. And trying to find a way to make guys like Ingwadala, you know, those type of guys, uh, Zaza Pachuri, uh, JaVale McGee. Step he's, up. He's going to try to make those guys step up and, and beat them. And if you, if those guys can win games, I think Pop can live with that. I mean, we just saw, I was talking just again before on this clip with uh, one of our contributors. And one of the things that we were discussing just from this last five quarter, going back to overtime, the extra period and the four quarters that followed, it became lopsided. Mm -hmm. Very lopsided in a series that after the third quarter of that game five looked like it should have gone seven. Right. It should have kept going. We saw it was competitive down the stretch of that. And look, I'm looking back on James Harden's season as somebody who I mean, I'm a Russell Westbrook MVP guy because I've too. never seen. Which are you? Russell Russell Russ, Russ, Russ all day long. I, I just haven't seen anything like that, and I don't like how a lot of people also say that this triple double number thing. Like, look, man, it, before these advanced metrics ten years ago, they would have handed it to him halfway through the season. But three things they need to think about: one, to be a six seed in the in the Western Conference, that's impressive. It's you had a, a better season than you think because the six seed, their record would probably be top two in the East. Mm. Second thing, he he lost the MVP. He lost Kevin Durant. Average a triple double that hasn't been done in I don't know how long. So you put all those together. Average a triple double, still get to the playoffs as a six seed after losing Durant. Come on, man. Nobody else is the MVP. Not right. even close. Another question then, going back to your AC Warriors. Um, better dunker, Baron Davis in that series against the Mavs or Russell Westbrook? Better AC. dunker? Yeah. More. more. Russ. Oh, see, I thought you were going to go with your team. That dunk was impressive. That one oh, dunk man. BD had against Carolina. You're right there. You're looking yeah, at that. Yeah, that, that was one. And, you know, he's done some other stuff that was impressive. Shirt up, yeah. But Russ is a different monster. And I have to tell y'all, I have footage <laughs> do you? of Russ dunking on Barron this summer in a pickup game. Yo, how do I get that footage? Don't give that, <laughs> do not give that to TMZ. Do not give it to TMZ. I, I, I got to call Baron to see if I, can, if I can get away. But look, we killed him so much. But the good thing about it, Baron came back and hit the game winning point on Russ. So that was his, that was his revenge. Right, that's fair. I need to see this tape. Damn. Yeah. He dunked on Baron pretty hard, too. That's good stuff, man. All right, well, Steven Jackson, thank you for stopping by. Anytime, man. I really appreciate man. it. My I look forward to here, seeing man. you. Uh, Y'all got to have me back, three. man. Yeah, I need you here. I need Chauncey here. Yeah. I go Chauncey was Mr. Big Shot. I can tell you from when I was playing Northern New Jersey, That's me rec from. league basketball. Northern New Jersey. How most, far is that from Patterson? Uh, about 15, 20 minutes. Okay. Yeah. All right. uh, the most competitive level of eight, nine, ten year old basketball you've ever seen. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, we wanted to be, uh, we, I'm serious, we wanted to be Chauncey. We wanted to be able to hit big shots like Chauncey was, man, seriously. So you're playing big with the good guy. No playing, offense to you. That's a big Please, bro. That's me. my big bro, though. Oh, that, I got to say one last thing. Why did all your game winners and game tying shots come on the road? Did you prefer, because LeBron recently said that he loves playing on the road. Me too. Uh, and just silencing a crowd. Nothing against the hometown yeah. fans. Well, I what just, that? I had the same confidence on the road as I did at home. Mm. So a lot of guys can't play on the road. A lot of guys Hostile. don't have that confidence. You know, like I, my old saying, I make love to pressure. <laughs> so I, I enjoy being on the road, taking those big shots. You know, like you said, quiet in the crowd. You know, that was that was the best feeling. Yeah, man. I feel you. I haven't been there, man. I wouldn't <laughs> be. You didn't hear the game winner when you was eight. No, no, uh, I was, first of all, you don't want to see my jump shot, man. You do not want to see my jump <laughs> shot. Logs don't look like balls. But here's, I learned, look, <laughs> look, here, I tell you this. I, I learned at a very young age, when I'm 10, 11 years old, and all my friends are sprouting up. I'm like six foot now. I was not that tall yeah. uh, at that age. Uh, you learn to establish an outside shot or hold the ball for one second and pass. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Pass. Hot everyone, pocket, hot pocket, hot everyone, <laughs> everyone loves the guy in pickup, right, who can pass and set screens. Because everyone wants to shoot. So. That's right. Everybody wants to shoot. <laughs> you need an off-ball screen, you call me. I'll be there. Oh, I'll be there in man. a second. Uh, thanks for joining me, Steve. As nah, always, my pleasure. Uh, comment below, like, favorite, subscribe. It's great to have in uh, some, some decent NBA talent here. <laughs>
We'll see you next time. T1T Sports. <laughs>